Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, here we are with another math video. This one's talking about the future value of an annuity. Okay, that word is kind of a strange word. Right below it here is a definition of what that word is. An annuity is a series of equal deposits made at equal time intervals. Okay, each deposit is made at the end of each time interval. Okay, so let's look at this formula right here. Um, in another video, I have shown people how to do these kinds of questions using something called the TVM solver on a graphing calculator. If you would like to do it that way, feel free to watch that video. In this video, we're going to use the formula here that you can see. All right. So the FV here stands for future value, how much the investment will grow to in the future. The R is the regular deposit that is being made, and it, the regular deposit could be me being made annually look at the chart here, semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, blah blah blah. These are all words that people need to memorize, okay? If they say the word quarterly, you need to think in your mind that's four times per year. If they say weekly, you need to know there are 52 weeks in a year, okay? Um, these are things we need to memorize and these kinds of words are very popular on a video that I made previously called uh, I believe it was the compound interest video. I refer to all of these words here as the word. In a question, they're always going to use a word, one of these words, and uh, from there you'll have to you'll have to use it to find the i and the n, which are right here. Okay, so we have one plus i to the exponent n. To find i and n, you're going to have to be very familiar with the word. Okay. The formula continues on to have a minus one there and an i along the bottom as well. So the i here is identical with the i right here. Okay? Eye of the tiger. No, just kidding. So anyway, okay, so just a quick review of what i and n are. Uh, remember that um, there's a video that I did before this called Compound Interest. And if you watch that video, I would really recommend watching that video first, the future value when it comes to compound interest because you really get a lot of practice with dealing with i and n okay just remember i what you do is you uh, find a percent let's say it's six percent and let's say the question says compounded semi-annually let's say this was the word well you know from the video that you take six percent turn it into a decimal and you divide by the word which is two okay you get 0 0.03 Okay, and to find n, right over here, that's the total number of compounding periods. So what you do is you, you take the years, so let's say it was like 12 years, and you multiply, not divide, you multiply by the word. Okay, and if the word was semi-annually, you'd say, okay, 12 years times semi-annually, that's 2. 12 times 2 is going to be 24. Okay, and that 24 you would put in the exponent right up here. But enough talk about that because we should practice these questions for real. So here we go. It says Fred deposits $1,500 every six months in an account that pays 6%. It should say per annum or per year, but it doesn't. Compounded semi-annually. What's the amount in the account at the end of 10 years? Okay, so we're going to use a calculator to do that. But before we do that, we should first figure out what R, what I, and what N are. So let's start with R. R is the easy one. Well, R is the regular payment being made, or the regular deposit. It's $1,500, okay? The I, it's not so bad, it's just the percent. So 0 0.06, I'm changing it into a decimal. And we're dividing by the word. What is the word? The word is semi-annually, which is twice a year. That means I is equal to 0 0.03, okay? and now for n, n is the number of, of years, there it is, 10 years, times the word. What is the word? Well, we already talked about that, it's 2. 10 times 2 is 20, and there we go. So let's, let's plug these into the formula now and see if we can get our answer. FV is equal to 1500, then a big bracket then a smaller bracket, then there's the one that's always there, then there's the i which is 0 0.03 if you recall, 
and then we have the n, which is 20. Then we have minus 1, big bracket, big square bracket. Put it all over top of the i, which is the exact same thing we already found right here, so 0 0.03. All we have to do now is do some number crunching on our calculator, and we should be able to come up with this, okay? Um, so just follow along, push pause if you need to, but I'm going to take this calculator right here, it just comes with my um, computer, and I'm going to start typing. Hopefully I don't make a mistake as I go, it's common. Remember to do this in the order called bed mass, so we do brackets first. So what's inside the brackets? I'm going to start typing. It's 1 plus 0 0.03. What is that? Well, 1.03. You could have done that in your head, but we didn't. Where's the exponent button on this calculator? Well, for those of you that don't know, it is right here. Okay? Different calculators have different exponent buttons. Some of them look like this. Some of them look like the one on my calculator. There's different styles. Okay? Anyway, I'm going to uh, go 1.03 to the exponent. And there's the symbol, surprisingly, right there. I didn't need to go write it. Okay, 1.03 to the exponent 20. Here we go. You get a long decimal. I'm not going to round it off right now because the more decimals you have, the more decimal places you keep, the more accurate our answer is going to be, okay? So I'm just going to keep all those. The calculator doesn't mind having them there. Okay, from there, look back at the formula here. We're going to subtract 1 minus 1. And that equals this long decimal. Take that long decimal that you've just found, which is all of the stuff inside of the square brackets here, multiply by what's out in front. Well, multiply by 1500. And finally, we're going to divide by the number on the bottom, 0 0.03, and we should get well, here's our answer. Remember, this is money we're talking about here. So I believe it was, hmm, I do not have a photographic memory. $40,305.56. $40,305.56. I'm going to put a dollar sign there. That is the future value. That's how much money um, Fred makes after depositing that money for 10 years. How much money would Fred have made if he just put that money under his bed? How much would he have made if he had just put the money under his bed with no interest whatsoever? Let's say he had $1,500. Sorry, he didn't do it every month. He did it twice a year for 10 years. How much money would Fred have altogether? Well, I'm going to find that out on the calculator. Actually, shoot, I could have done this in my head. <laughs> 1500 times 2 is obviously 3,000, and 3,000 times 10 is 30,000. Wow, we did not need the calculator for that. The reason why I asked how much if he had just kept it under his bed, well, this is how much he made at the bank. Under his bed, he made this amount. If you subtract those two numbers, that is how much extra money he made by putting it in the bank. That is how much interest he made, okay? How much interest did friend Fred earn from his annuity? All you do is subtract these two numbers, okay? And then you would have your answer. I'm just going to write it down right here. He has by putting it in the bank, he had $10,305.56. That's pretty good. It was worth it for him to put it in the bank. Okay, let's do one more question and then we're done, okay? Randy wants to, put, wants to buy a $5,000 car when he graduates from high school. This sounds a little different, this question. He wants to buy this, this car in the future. He deposits $85 at the end of each month in an account that pays 9% compounded monthly. Randy will graduate in four years. Will he have enough money by then? Okay, so we're just going to see if he has enough for this $5,000 car. We don't actually need the $5,000 in this question. Okay, so we're just going to we're going to compare the price later and see if we have enough money. Okay, let's quickly find. Well, we know what R is. I don't need to write that. It's $85, right? Everybody can see that. However, I. I want to quickly look at I. 
I is 9% per annum. Now I know it doesn't say per annum, but 0 0.09. We're going to cut that up into 12 chunks, which is monthly. We're dividing by the word, which is 12. The word is 12. 0 0.09 divided by 12. 0 0.09 divided by 12. And that equals 0 0.0075. Hopefully you're okay with that. Now we're going to do the n part. n is the number of years, which I see is 4, times the word. Well, the word was monthly, so 4 times 12. If we know our times tables, we can do this in our head. So 4 times 10 is 40, and another 4 times 2 is 8. If you put those together, you get 48. That's how I do it in my head, but hey, everybody's different. Okay, let's do this formula as my son would say, let's do this. Okay, 85, and then big bracket, 1 plus i is 0 0.0075. Okay, n is 48. Then there's a minus 1, all over top of Again, 0 0.0075. Okay. Now I'm going to punch this in the calculator, and I'm not going to talk so much this time. But you know I'm going to start with the brackets, right? 0 0.0075. That gives me 1.0075 to the exponent, 48. And that equals a long decimal. I'm going to subtract 1 now and I'm going to multiply by the 85 in front. And finally, I'm going to divide by 0 0.0075. That gives me $4,889.26. Yes. I just went back to see if I remembered. Yes, my memory's never very good. So, does he have enough money to buy the $5,000 car? This is kind of a silly question because I would say, yeah, he, he's close enough. But I guess if this were like a math test, you'd have to say, no, he doesn't quite have enough money. He's going to have to borrow, you know, a little bit more money in order to buy that car. So, or maybe he can go down to the dealership and uh, talk them down. Or even better, don't buy it from a dealership, buy it used, and then maybe the person will be more friendly. Why am I wasting time talking about that right now? We have talked about the future value of an annuity, and I hope that you kind of understand how to do this now. Okay, good luck on your own questions. Take care.